Well, the Tour de France has been littered with for a number of crashes and incidents, and we're already on day three. And a lot of people are saying, you just got to keep out of trouble and you may even win the Tour. Well, what's been suggested is that disc brakes may have contributed to some of these crashes. Well, let's just roll that intro and let's just have a talk about whether that is actually a real possibility. Well, first, let's just have a look at what happens when a vehicle stops. So, first of all, you would have the, the eyes detect that something's stopping in front, or you have a command to stop. And in that distance, let's just say it's 100 k's, and it's a car, it's actually been proven that almost 50% of the stopping distance is the reaction time. Now, of course, bicycles aren't going that fast, They're usually doing around about 40 kilometers an hour, 40 to 45 kilometers an hour in a peloton. So that distance may be about 20%. So it might be about 20% reaction time and 80% and braking time. But the principle's the same. As you're deciding to pull that brake and you actually pull it before the actual pad hits the disc, the vehicle is still moving forward for some time before it actually even starts to stop. And we know this, this is, this is a, a pretty established fact. So now we've established that in the whole distance of stopping, part of it is reaction time, and part of it is the physical braking, the mechanical braking of the bike where it's turning the kinetic energy into heat energy. Now, whether it was a rim brake bike or a disc brake bike, that distance to reaction time is going to be exactly the same. So over the whole braking distance, that component or that 20% is going to still be exactly the same, even if you argue that the disc brakes could stop quicker. When they're riding in very close proximity, they're obviously drafting, they're trying to get as close to the bicycle in front, they're riding in extremely close proximity. There's bikes to the side of them, bikes in front of them. Now, if there was a crash or the bike in front started to brake, the time to reaction, they would have almost hit the bike in front. So therefore, the fact that a disc brake would have caused the accident or a rim brake, if there's any difference, is really debunked because the, the reaction time the bike would have still traveled almost a huge percentage of the distance towards the bike in front before it hit the bike, and there'd be very little braking time. So the riders would still be hitting the bike in front at some speed, whether it's a rim brake bike or a disc brake bike. So this really debunks the theory that disc brakes may have actually contributed to any of these crashes. So in conclusion, although I'm a ring brake fanboy. I can't support this thesis of the disc brakes contributed to these massive crashes that we've had in the tour so early in the race. And we've had a number of, of riders injured. Probably got something more to do with some silly spectator stepping out in front of the, the peloton. But uh, there has been quite a few other crashes and there's other contributing factors to that. You know, there's been very small roads and there's also been poor weather. And of course, it could be just an error that one of the riders has made. And we've seen this before. And it's unfortunate that we've had so many accidents in such a short period of time. But I don't think it's anything unusual like a component change to disc brakes. Well, anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to leave it. Leave your comments down below. Do you think it's stiff brakes or rim brakes or it's just coincidence? Cheers.